So I hope you enjoyed learning how to hack into Windows using two reboots, two special commands, and four commands at the command line terminal. Uh, but I have something extra special as a bonus video. A few students have asked already, well, uh, how do we hack into a Mac? Or, wow, I'm really glad that I use a Mac because the PC was so easy to hack. Well, I've got bad news for Mac owners as well. You've got uh, just as easy a time, maybe even easier, hacking into a Mac. You only need one reboot, one special key combination, and four commands to create a new admin user account or to hack the root account and change the password and then log in and do anything you want to do on a Macintosh computer. So if you've got an old Mac sitting around or if you ever forget your Mac password, it can be a little scary. Uh, but I can show you how to get back all of your files unless you've got things encrypted, and we'll talk about that right at the end here. So I've got uh, Mac booted up here in the background. I'm going to use one reboot, one special key combination, and then four commands at the terminal so that we can get into this Mac. Well, I don't remember the password on this Macintosh, so I'm going to have to do a restart. And my first special key, com or my one and only special key combination for Mac, is going to be Command S. So as I restart, all right, when we reboot, we have to press the uh, Command and S keys to boot up in single user mode. I've just run a simple clear command to clear the screen on my MacBook so that you can see what we've got here. We're going to, uh, we've used our one reboot. Our one special key combination was Command S for single user mode. And now we're going to use these four commands, sbin, fsck-fy, that is going to uh, do a file system check. So we say slash sbin. And we can, uh, you'll notice I can do sb and then tab. The tab key will help me autofill if you've not used that before on a Mac. And then fsck, I can just hit the tab, dash fy. So that's going to be my first command. You hit that and let it run. It will take just a little bit of time. Then I'm going to show you the second command, sbin slash mount. So we're going to mount the uh, file system or mount the disk drive, space slash w. And there are spaces between these because we're uh, using some uh, flags or arguments with our mount command. Then you hit enter, that'll take just a little bit of time as well. And this next com command is a long one, so I'm going to split it up over two lines. It is launch ctl space load space, and then this is a long line, so I'm going to span two lines by using the backslash here. I'm going to type capital or slash capital S Y, hit tab, and it'll fill in system. Then library, so capital L, little i, and capitalization matters on a Mac, tab. And then we need launch, so L-A-U-N. There's more than one launch, so we do a capital D, launch daemons. And then com dot apple, and we can do AP tab, open, open directory D dot plist. If you're on a really old Mac, there's a com dot apple dot directory services local dot p list so if you don't get an o uh, p and hit tab try a capital d um, yeah directory services local dot p s capital d i r and hit tab and it should fill in that last piece as well so we'll hit we'll hit enter on that then we just need to run the password command p a s s w d and it'll ask us for a new password twice So I've typed a new password, and then all I have to do is type exit, and the Mac will reboot. Uh, well, it'll finish booting all the way into Mac OS, and we'll be able to log in as root using our new username. All right, now the Mac is booted back up into the regular Mac OS, but uh, instead of the username and password that I can't remember, I'm going to enter root as my username, and the new password that I just created. 
and it will ask if I want to update the keychain password. I don't want to do that because I don't want to mess up anything on this Mac. And I'm not going to create a new keychain. I'm just going to continue my login as the root user. I'm a full administrator or super user on this Macintosh computer. So I'm going to be able to uh, create new user accounts. I'll be able to um, see all the user's files just like I was able to on a PC computer. And the first time you run this, you may see some setting up your Mac. You may have to click through a couple of things, but then you'll be logged in as a root user on Windows. If I go to I'm on my Macintosh computer, if I go to the Finder and come to Users, I can find my real user account, bpane, and there are all my files. So if I go into my Documents, I'm going to see all my Udemy course files. I go into downloads. I'll see everything that I've downloaded recently. Not too bad. So everything is there and I'm able to get to it. And if I want to create a new user account, all I need to do is come to the system preferences and come to users and groups. And if I want to, I could create a new user here and give that a new name. You get the idea. So we can create a whole new user account. We can either have them as a standard user, which is smart. You don't want to run around with the root privileges turned on on your Mac. Or we can, uh, if we need to have an administrative account, we can do that as well. So even a Mac is not completely safe from this attack. In fact, we only had to use one special key combination after one reboot and then four commands at the command line, and now we've got access to all of our files again, and we're able to, uh, to do some, well, pretty cool things if you own the computer. Make sure you only do this on a computer that you own or have explicit written permission from the owner and controller to uh, do this kind of hack. So one more time, just some quick lessons learned. Physical access is total access. Never leave your laptop or desktop unattended. Um, if someone has physical access, notice on the Mac we didn't even have to have a boot disk. We just used uh, one of the special key combinations to get in as a single user mode uh, user so that we were a root user on our Mac. Um, ethical hacking is useful and practical. You can get to files even when you've forgotten your Mac password. The only thing is to protect against this hack while on Windows we saw that we could change the BIOS settings. On a Mac, really, we need to use File Vault or uh, use some other encryption on your hard drive to encrypt the files that are either sensitive um, or that you just want to keep other people out of and use a strong password. Um, if you're using a business laptop, you definitely need to have encryption turned on because if you lose access to those files, it can have customer information or more. If you're doing this as a home user, if you encrypt your files, the one thing you need to know is that if you forget that password, you cannot recover those files. So uh, we have to mix our security with the usability, but uh, you can see that we've got a lot of really cool things we're gonna be able to do in this course, and we will see you in the next lesson.